Hi, I'm Ayana, and this is Andre. After college, instead of chasing the American dream, we decided to chase our dream, the dream of travel. This led us to purchase our sailboat Naida, a Hunter 34 monohull. Follow along to see where the wind takes us. Welcome back, guys. We were ready to leave to the Bahamas uh, yesterday and we tied everything down. We lifted the dinghy, we lifted the outboard, we tied down all our jugs, we tied down everything inside, and we started the engine. We're ready to pull up the lines, and we noticed a noise. Yeah, it was a really bad grinding noise. We've never heard it before, but it turns out our cutlass bearing is bad. So I have this here. Um, this is going to be a tough project to tackle in the water because hauling out right now is not an option. We want to be in the Bahamas as soon as possible. Yeah, we did film the process of this first part and let me just say this was a major project in itself. We didn't even know if we were going to be able to get the prop off in the water. Um, we did it with some $20 Harbor Freight tools and uh, we did it in one day. Actually, I think you got it off in like 10 minutes. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't as hard as we thought it was going to be, but it definitely required special tools, um, which we had to go out and buy, and that caused a delay. But yeah. getting the prop off itself only took a couple minutes. The first part went well, and now we're waiting the tools for yeah, the second so, part. So we had to order a special tool to get the cutlass bearing out. I'm hoping that this tool will work and allow me to do the project underwater, because if it doesn't work we might have to haul out but we really want to leave and get out of here and get to the Bahamas. We didn't know exactly what the problem was at first and we were a bit stressed trying to figure it out but as usual we go to the Hunter Forum and YouTube. Uh, we are <laughs> students of the tube and um, after a night and early morning of research <laughs> what? <laughs> Hashtag students of the tube. <laughs> After a late night and an early morning of research, mostly Andre's part, he figured out that it was the cutlass bearings. There's a very specific tool that we did end up just ordering, but it's a little on the expensive side and something you'll probably only use one time. So it does kind of suck to have to order it. So a lot of people actually create it themselves. Uh, so we were thinking about attempting to do that. And I don't know, why did we decide? So the cutlass bearing is this piece here. Um, this goes inside the strut. And if you guys look closely, you can see the metal outside and there's a rubber inside, which is the bearing part. In order to get that out, you have to have this precise measurement to uh, push the metal. You don't wanna just push the rubber or you don't wanna push the strut because you don't wanna put force on the strut unnecessarily. What we did was we got the strut pro tool. The tool is designed specifically for this exact bearing. A lot of people who make the jig themselves, they have access to a machine shop where they can have their custom tool precisionly cut. So with that being said, we just ordered it. And not only that, if we made our own tool and it didn't work, we probably would have been a couple hundred bucks into materials. So it was easier to just buy the tool and we know that it should work. And if it doesn't work, that means it's an error on my part. We looked into hiring a diver, but the price we'd pay a diver, I could just buy the tool and do it myself. And not only that, I'd prefer to do the work myself versus having somebody yeah. maybe do a good job and maybe not do a good job. So right, and having easier. that achievement too. And we've already got the project halfway done pretty much. Yeah. So we ordered the tool we need for the next step. That's gonna take a couple days. In the meantime, we have the prop off. So we decided we might as well give it some TLC and now we're gonna grind down all the barnacles and growth and repaint it. Let's get it. All right, I'm gonna give it a two coats of primer and then I'm gonna put another layer of uh, anti-foul type paint to uh, protect it so it doesn't get as fouled up as it did. cutlass bearing gets worn down over time from using the engine and that could have been the case for us however this is the first time we ever noticed that noise and we actually haven't used the engine in uh, a few months so we think that um, the barnacles and marine growth that have been growing underneath the boat actually got into the uh, cutlass bearing and potentially wore it down on one side. Um, so we definitely have to stay on top of maintenance like cleaning the shaft and cleaning the prop and just under the boat in general. 
but hopefully when we head to the Bahamas it won't be as bad. Uh, but we'll definitely be able to um, stay on top of it more because we'll be able to see it in the crystal clear water. Our tool finally came in! Yes! We're about to go pick up the tool from our friend's house and get straight to work. This tool is going to decide whether we get to leave in the next week. This is the main problem right now and I hope this tool works. It's pretty heavy duty. Look at the cotter pins. Look at how thick the cotter pins are. That is crazy. There's a very large bolt. <laughs> there's no way we could have been able to make this. We couldn't have been able to make this quality. Yeah. And it saved us a lot of stress, right? <laughs> We were able to get other things done while we were waiting for it. Definitely glad to go with that. So we got a fairly clear day here in our little cove. A lot of seaweed, but it's meant to be great viz. The best viz we've actually had since we've been here in this little cove area on the day we received the tool. So I'm hoping that everything continues to go smooth for us. Okay, we're putting the part together like okay so we have the tool assembled and we're gonna go over the game plan so we have the tool all set up as you can see here it's just like a puller so we have a inch and a quarter plate here that's gonna allow the bearing to slide through here um, we'll use the new bearing here to line this up perfectly on the strut so that the bearing perfectly slides through here on the extraction um, and then on the other side, we have the one inch, which is the size of the shaft. It's going to sit in there like that. The collet is going to sit on the shaft, and that's going to push the bearing through. So the plan of attack is to, well, first, Ayanna has to undo the set screws down there. Um, there's two set screws still that we left. Um, we didn't want to lose those, so we just left them in. She's going to go down, unscrew those, come back up with those, store those safely. I'm going to go down, put the collet on first. And then I'm gonna come back up, grab the bearing puller, and I'm gonna assemble that. And then once that's assembled, we're gonna go ahead and just uh, torque this down and see if we can get that cutlass bearing out. And we are doing this all on breath hold only. So it'll probably take us a little bit longer than it would if we had scuba tanks or uh, snuba yeah. Nemo or whatever. We'll see how that goes. We might have to take turns diving down um, so that we never have hands off of the tool. That's going to be the tricky part because we don't want to lose any of these pieces. So at first, before everything's secured onto the prop shaft, we might have to, yeah, take turns back and forth. So we'll have to figure out. It's going to be a teamwork effort. Yeah, for sure. Since we are doing this underwater on breath hold instead of scuba, we needed to make sure we both understood the plan as it will be hard to communicate underwater. So we took the time to carefully go through each step of the plan here.
I was just saying, just make sure you can swim with it. Alright, yeah, just uh, let me get my pants. Does it look bad? I don't know, I would have to compare it, but there's definitely growth in here, so. Yeah, I don't know. Huh? It's pretty much worn down to the metal in some spots. The regrouping in the day because we successfully got off the uh, old cutlass bearing. And so now we have to flip the tool around so that we can use it to put the new one in. How we're gonna do that? You wanna explain how we're gonna do that? So on the back side where the one and one fourth would come out, we're gonna swap that plate to the one inch plate so that way it'll line up directly on the bearing and push the bearing right back in. That'll drive the collets out and our new cutlass bearing will be installed. So we got the new cutlass bearing back in. Now it's time to disassemble the tool and get the prop back on, make sure everything spins smoothly in there. Hopefully there's no more grinding. Clean the shaft, get the sinks on, and we're off to the Bahamas finally!
was uh, it was a lot of thread but it wasn't hard to turn at any point it didn't get stuck we didn't run into any problems so i think that's really huge in boat projects because there is always problems that come up so being able to just basically execute the plan and it going as planned is huge you guys so in that last footage you saw it looked like we got a big win um, we actually did change the cutlass successfully but we ran into a big issue I will show you um, this is the issue here if you can guess what that is then you'll know what's going on in our next video thank you guys for tuning into this week's episode check back next week to see the big problem that revealed itself and how we tackled it <laughs>